It's a W King D8 against the JBL Extreme 3. Oh, hang on a sec. No, it's not. It's against the JBL Extreme 1. Am I absolutely bonkers? Why am I doing the W King D8 against the speaker that came out July 2015? Well, it's because I was asked to. I've got a request. Can you do the W King D8? It's JBL Extreme one. Yeah, I thought, okay, I'll knock that one out. If you, if there's interest, there's interest. If I don't get any views, guess what? There was no interest. W King D8 is a 50 watt speaker. Um, a lot of interest when it first came out because it's one of the first ones to be a genuine cheap boombox. Since then, we've had the Soundcore Motion Boom. Uh, might not be a complete boombox, but deep bass for cheap uh, suddenly became possible. But at the time. Against the JBL Extremes, it was fantastic value, the W King D8, because we're talking 70 quid. Wanna flag this? Still 70 quid, 50 watt speaker, decent bass slam. And when you're being asked, okay, we can probably get this for about 120 pound unused, second hand, probably get it cheaper. 280 pound for JBL Extreme 3. So the JBL Extremes are JBL Extremely priced speakers. If we can get the same bass slam and pay less money, why would we pay it? So, all three JBL Extremes have a very different uh, sound signature. I did get knocked in my last one. Oh, I always get knocked for something. But what do I do? I don't matter how much I put into my uh, reviews, someone will knock me for it. Now I know how the big channels feel uh, when they get knocked multiple times. I got knocked because I, I did. I thought, hey, be kind. I'm doing the JBL Charge 5. You wanted to hear it against the JBL Extreme 3. But there's interest in all the JBL Extremes. I'll do all three JBL Extremes. And do you know what? Like, oh, you're doing all, all the JBL Extremes in there. We don't know the figures and what's it all mean. Guys, I'm not forcing you to watch. If you find it a bit too much, it wouldn't be the end of the world. If you didn't comment, I just moved on. I got asked for the JBL Extreme one. So I'm just in the JBL Extreme one against the W King D8. What are the differences between the speakers? Well, even though it's what, five, six years old, there's still a difference. If you're trying to get one of these, you know, uh, new, unused, uh, pr you know, rather than pre-owned second hand, you're still gonna be paying more for the JBL Extreme one than uh, uh, the, J the W King D8, which came out in December 2018. So why is that? Why would you pay that? Because on paper, mm, 40 watts. But 40 watts of JBL Extreme one means you've got to stick the mains lead in. If you want to stay portable, you're going to get about 30 watts equivalent out of that against 50 watts already. It's sounding interesting now, isn't it? The W King D8. Yes. In terms of battery, what 37 watt hours? The bigger battery on the JBL Extreme one. We've got 30 watt hours on the W King D8. But of course, if it goes louder, if it has more bass, you're going to get less battery life out of it. So. I know this is always a big deal. You believe the figures that the companies are giving you about battery life, guys. They're all using the same technology for batteries. Just compare the batteries. 37 watt hours is a bigger battery than W King D8, but if we get more volume and if we get more deep bass, of course, it's gonna cost in terms of battery life. There's no free lunches. However, I will say anecdotally, about four and a half hours, JBL Extreme one, maximum volume. My own personal testing, four hours, 12 minutes. W King D8, so about the same at the end of the day, which is exactly what I'm saying. Much bigger battery on paper, JBL Extreme 1, but if it goes louder and has more bass, spoiler, spoiler alert, you're gonna get less battery life. It's, that's physics. Old speaker means old technology, Bluetooth 4.1, Bluetooth 5, but older speakers also mean auxiliary inputs. We all still want our auxiliary input because we are audio guys and Every time we come out with a new speaker, they're taking away the auxiliary input. I guess they're thinking, you're buying a Bluetooth speaker, what do you want the auxiliary input for? Well, we want the options, mate. We want the, op the options, please. You can do stereo pairing on all of these, but bear in mind, connect. Can only connect to other connect speakers. It won't connect to, to Connect Plus, and it won't connect to Party Boost. Stereo, for all these types of speakers, it still seems to be something you, it's catching you out. You need the same model speaker. So even if it's party boost, whatever, and it will connect to other party boost speakers, stereo always requires same model speaker. You can use both of these as a power bank, but you can only use a JBL Extreme one as a phone speaker. In terms of weight, yep, 2.1 kilos, 2.4 kilos, slightly, slightly uh, less weight on paper, but it, it's about the same. Once you go over two kilos, you're gonna feel about the same in the hand. Now, older speakers, uh, here's the problem. Don't drop this in your swimming pool. Don't drop this in your bath 
or in the sea because IPX5 means it's only splash proof. So bear that in mind, not IPX7, it's IPX5. Both of these speakers have tweeters. It looks great on the specs, on the marketing sheet, separate tweeters, and I know you, you guys love it. Oh look, that one's got tweeters, and that one's got tweeters, but guys, if it's not properly in implemented, it doesn't make much difference. And I've yet to find a speaker, to be quite honest with you, maybe outside of the Motion Plus, where the tweeters actually make a difference. I think it's, a lot of it is marketing. Either the crossover is not implemented well, or the tweeters are quite cheap. And you're not getting the full benefits as though, you know, if you had a full standing speaker with multiple drivers and proper crossovers, that's when it makes a big difference. It's gonna crack on. Let's hear what the differences are. Moderate volume listening around 55%. I only call you when it's I'ma let you know and keep it simple Trying to keep it up don't seem so simple I just fucked two bitches before I saw you And you gon' have to do it at my tempo Always trying to send me off to rehab Drugs start to feeling like it's decaf I'm just trying to live life for the moment and all these motherfuckers wanna relapse I only call you when it's half past Five the only time that I'll be by your side I only love it when you touch me Not feel me when I'm fucked up That's the real me when I'm fucked up That's the real me, yeah I only call you when it's half So we, we already knew, well, you should have known if you've been watching my channel and not turning off because I did three extremes in one video. JBL Extreme 1 has incredible loads, loads, loads of upper bass punch. That's some mid bass, but it has none, zero. It's cut off. There is no deep bass on the Extreme 1. There is some deep bass on the W King D8, and therefore, by comparison, there's a huge difference. Deep bass, no deep bass. Might be called JBL Extreme, but it's extreme in the upper bass. Whereas this has a bass all over the place, but it, it's noticeable there's more body on the W King D8 versus the, the thinner sound of the, w, the JBL Extreme 1. But it's not a win-win for the King because it's a clearer sound. This is particularly muddy at lower volumes, the W King D8. And I'll tell you something else I should have mentioned right at the beginning. We have EQ mode on the W King D8. We have two modes. If you press that button, if I turn that speaker on, uh, once it's connected, all I have to do is press this button at the end. It'll go into its EQ mode. And the first thing people do is they press that EQ mode. That's not actually connecting, is it? Because I haven't turned it on. They press the EQ mode and it's, wow! That's more dynamic and there's more bass. Woo hoo! But, it's what we see a lot, it's a trick. So you press, you, that's connected. I'm gonna press the EQ button. That blue light will flash, it's now in EQ mode. It's basically just going louder. So it's, it's basically the same frequency response, but a couple of dB louder, make, making you think it's doing things it's not really doing. It, it's slightly more V-shaped. So there's a little bit less in the mids, there's a little bit more in the highs, but the default mode is a more balanced mode and there's very little in it. Basically, you only need the EQ when you hit maximum volume and you want a bit more volume. And you'll, when I do my maximum volume test, you'll see why that uh, EQ mode is not a free lunch. So uh, other than my maximum volume test, I'm only using EQ mode, which is the proper mode. And the other one is a fake loud mode. So thinner, but clearer, but no deep bass. Thicker sound, got more meat, and a lot of people are gonna like a boom, boom, thump, 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 but it's muddy for this, 
a lot of bass, slightly overblown, well, quite a bit overblown. It's not, we're not saying balanced, but it's not completely, um, it's not as unbalanced, I would say, as the Onyx Studio speakers, which are really, really down there. Um, it's slightly more balanced, but, but not balanced, uh, if you get what I'm saying. But muddy in the vocals, so the big difference is, if you want your vocals, the Extreme One wins out there because it's a clearer, kind of more pleasant sound. There is bass, but it's all upper bass, whereas this is thick, thumpy, thumpy sound. You're gonna like that, gonna like that, but vocals will sound a bit recessed um, and the clarity will not be there compared to a lot of other speakers because low volume is not uh, the W King D8's greatest asset. So we go on to 80% volume. I'm the girl that likes to daydream and pretend. much the same story. One thing to note on the JBL Extreme 1, if indeed you're still looking at that speaker, is one of its problems is it has a significant dip between 2 and 4 kilohertz. Well that's gone. You know, there's no EQ mode. You'll have to use a third party app uh, to balance that out. The only JBL of these two companies give you an app, but it's a bit of a nightmare. There is no EQ in their app. You cannot embed EQ into firmware, which is when I really use EQ. I know this is an ongoing debate why I do this, that, and not with the others. And only use it for the purposes of comparing speakers, only when it's embedded into the speaker and it makes a reasonable amount of difference. So, you can get an app, you can't get an app. It's a cleaner, thinner sound, but clearly there's more thump, there's more, ba more bass, there's more body to the W King D8. But vocals is not what it does. Um, it gives you, you know, a thump. It gives you a party sound, I guess, whereas, it was a party sound on the JBL Extreme when it came out, and then we had this as the JBL Extreme Killer. I wouldn't say it was complete murder, because that's not particularly clean sounding, and it's quite a hard sound. To me, it's it's a kind of what I would call a unsophisticated sound, very not hi-fi like, but quite but still a pleasing sound. Whereas I'm not going to say this is hi-fi sounding, but certainly cleaner, and to some people will sound more pleasant and smoother. Still got that big upper bass uh, punch, but no, no zero. No deep bass at all by today's standards. So what is the actual headroom maximum volume comparison? <laughs>
clearly the loudest W King D8 in EQ mode, but heavily distorted, very dirty sounding. It's over 2 dB up on the W King D8 in default mode, and that tells you just how much it is really pushing that amp. It does manage to squeeze out a bit more in the bass, but it loses out in terms of dynamic range. W King D8 in default mode, one decibel more in terms of dynamic range. That's true peak to the quietest moments of the track. And then just behind is Extreme 1, but you have to plug the mains lead in to get even that close to the D8 in its default mode. Even then, it can't match the total amount of bass, even with its upper bass push. But now at maximum volume with the mains lead plugged in, minus 26, minus 26, it's on a par in default mode, W King D8. It's one decibel behind in terms of mid bass, and it's four decibels behind in terms of the deep bass, 30 to 65 hertz, compared to W King D8 in its default mode. If you don't plug the mains lead in, if it's truly portable, it's a decibel quieter than with the mains lead plugged in. And you're two decibels down in terms of total bass. So you can't push the Extreme 1 with battery compared to the W King D8 in its default mode. It's a decibel and a half behind in terms of overall loudness. It's two decibels behind in terms of peak. It's three decibels down in terms of total bass. And in terms of the deep bass where at maximum volumes, this makes it more listenable. It's six decibels down on the W King D8 default mode. So for me, that's a win. W King D8 default mode, but EQ mode pretty much unlistenable. So a bit of a mixed bag at maximum volume. Some things are obvious. EQ mode goes a lot louder. That's blinking obvious. It goes louder by a significant margin, but it's a very, very distorted. It's very noisy, very gritty. To me, not very pleasant, but ultimately, if you just want loud, 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 you're, you're outdoors. It does the job. It does that job without having to plug the mains lead in, and that's the point. If you want full 40 watts out of your JBL Extreme, you've got to put the mains lead in. Otherwise, we're talking 30 watts equivalent in, on the JBL Extreme, and it doesn't go, you know, as loud as you might expect um, at earlier comparisons. So, for me, only listenable in default mode on the WQ D8 at maximum volume. And if we're talking portable, it's so it's going to be default mode versus portable non mains lead in. And then to me, again, I think clear winner to the W King D8 because it is now packing more bass all round. It is uh, a more full bodied sound. There is more punch. It's pretty thin and anemic maximum volume well, without the mains lead in. It goes a bit louder, has a bit more bass, is actually quite a bit more dynamic with the mains lead plugged in. However, um, it's about portable Bluetooth speakers for my channel. And I would say a clear winner if you're going to maximum volume. And I know you, there's a lot of comments now that are coming up all the time. And one of them, one of them is, well, I wouldn't play a speaker over 80%. I think the maximum volume test is all rubbish and it doesn't really matter. And I can use my EQ. All right, there's a million different variables out there. So if you don't want to go to maximum volume, that's fine. Personally, I find myself at 90% volume on these speakers a hell of a lot. I'm doing a maximum volume test, of course. You don't need to watch it if you're not doing, uh, if you're not going to maximum volume, stick with the 80% test. But at maximum volume, D8 is a clear winner. Lower volumes, it's gonna depend on your, your, your preferences. But lacking any of that slam now at uh, maximum volume, D8 has a bit of meat on the bone, has some slam. You can go to the EQ mode outdoors without having to plug the mains lead in if you want. So, at the price, JB Extreme one now is, yeah, I know a lot of you still like the sound. It's not a speaker for loud volumes, but it can do a job at lower volumes, can play it in a quite a clean way. And that upper bass push will fool a lot of you into thinking there's more bass going on than there really is, but it will still be a thin sound. You still got that two to four kilos, kilohertz dip. Um, but I can still see, even for myself, maybe at lower volumes, it's a preference over the W King D8 because the vocals are so muddy. If you only listen to instrumentals, it, Probably not a problem at all if you just want a huge thump. It's definitely got a bigger thump and with deeper bass than the JBL Extreme. But again, as I say a lot of the times, it's going to be personal opinions at low volumes. Because, and I'm saying that because at maximum volume, I think the D8 is a clear winner. So if you're not going past 80%, bear that in mind. And if you are going past 80%, still bear that in mind. I hope you got something out of this video that I was asked to do when I've done. And I thank you for watching.